record and say hello everyone welcome to another episode of to be released i'm here with zenrot hello i am here yes i'm on the also, show i'm still crazy lagging so if you hear that throughout this episode that's the reason why <laughs> sometimes zen just can't hear me or he can hear me, but he can't. And every hear. time I talk, I have to stretch it out to as many words as I possibly can, just to make sure that I get a couple in there <laughs> through the cutouts. Exactly, exactly. Uh, all right. Before we get into it, I want to mention the fact that I'm almost at a thousand. I'm. I think I'm like a hundred and uh, subscribers. That is. I think I'm like at a hundred and fifty nine at the moment. Nice. Yeah. So only a hundred forty one more to go. We're gonna we're gonna get there sometime by the end of this year, I swear. Uh, that is very doable. Yeah, we could totally do that. One hundred percent. And I also think it's amazing that uh, I don't lose the subscribers for putting up videos that nobody watches, <laughs> except for the dedicated <laughs> uh, ten or twenty or so that do. Uh, for example, go check out my awesome new Itadaki Street series where I play a slime, where I play. The ultimate uh, crossover between Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, a Monopoly game that's more about business. Sounds like a thing. It's a long-running series. Do you know that that is the only crossover Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy have, has ever had? Is it a Doctor Monopoly? Street? Monopoly? Yes. That, like... It's uh, pretty funny. Yeah, it is. Square owns both. <laughs> it's not like there's something uh, keeping both of them apart. Motherfuckers, they own both of them. <laughs> and yet they've never had an actual crossover except for in this Monopoly party game. Where you can finally answer the question, who's a better business person, Slime or Yuffie from Final Fantasy uh, VII? In not Yuffie, I can tell you that. No, I can tell you right now, uh, as if anyone's seen that video, I'm kicking her ass. So let it be known. I'm having troubles with the other two, but Yuffie is not a problem. <laughs> Terrible at business. Can't get her fonts for anything. Uh, so yeah, it's amazing that I can put up stuff like that and uh, constantly release videos that very few people watch. And yet my subscribers thing still grows. Hey, man. I'm gonna get there soon. Find it's about the the people who watch the one thing they do like. Those are the the subs that come back. Exactly. It's all it's for all those that love the fast food stories. Oh man, I forgot to tell you. One dude accused me of uh, ad rev farming on um, uh, JoJo Pitter Patter be popping. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I feel wow, could have just made a video of units instead decided to make a really long video where all you do is talk about them. Haha, ha, yeah. Great money. What? What? I don't you know the office. So here's the thing, I know for a fact shorter videos make more money. It's not make like way more money cuz more people watch them and they watch them more than once. Yeah, if you ever want to know why I'm at like uh, uh 859 is because most of my videos are over 30 minutes long. <laughs> people don't watch long shit. No they don't. That's and crazy. It. I don't understand like uh what? maybe it's one of those people who are like I just want like singular unit videos and i just want uh you i I don't know man nobody made him watch it oh you didn't have to watch it no he didn't need to watch it he didn't need to hear about uh yeah i don't know it's weird especially because that format of stuff i think i think people know at this point if you wanted to do a single unit like look at you would do that yourself you don't need me to be there but putting uh units on the big boy scale is something reserved for this is just for us paneling around for the fact that we also love to play this game. Plus, like, there's nothing in that that was like even remotely a new series I just started just now to farm ad rev. It's like a thing we've done for years. Yeah, it's true. We've done it for years. Maybe, again, see, this is what happens. I told you that this would happen, that more people would actually start watching Bitter Patter Be Poppin' than the original series. What's the, <laughs> what's the usual view count for to be released? Uh, I would say it's around... It, 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 it's a, I'll say it's a steady 200 around-ish. 
depending on the units okay. put up and uh, what we're talking about. I want to say, funny enough, the Mew Mew Force one, where we just fucked around talking about Broly, is one of the more viewed ones of the recent times. Not counting the ones with Defray, of course. Oh, yeah, those aren't particularly fair. Yeah, those aren't fair. It's like, yeah, let's bring in... Uh, yes, Rhyme you were Star. right. Pitter Patter Be Poppin does, in fact, have more people that watches it than the original. It's true. But it's also because uh, you have more subscribers than me. I do. So I do. one day, I'll get up to So your... I'm like the only person that makes JoJo content. So people got to come somewhere if they uh, want it. Is that true? I got a monopoly on the market. Is is that like a no a break kayfabe? Is that real? Is are you the only one really making uh, pitter patter be popping videos? Pitter patter be popping. Pitter patter pop. Well, yeah, well, I am the only one making pitter patter be popping videos. But I think a couple other people do pitter patter pop videos. That like Zaki, I think does some. Huh. The only one who is like primarily does it as like the thing that I do. Interesting, uh, man crazy ass world out there isn't it with single uh gotcha video things single view lenses of stuff it's a crazy world yeah. out there and let's get into uh let's get into the 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 original uh less popular version the dokkan big boy scale <laughs> <laughs> let's hit it it's got a big history but it is often forgotten. It's like one of those movies that gets released first, so it always goes, but what about the history of this movie? It's so important when it's not as good as the more modern thing. <laughs> so wait, are you saying that uh, that to be released is Dragon Ball and Pitter Patter Be Poppin' is Dragon Ball Z, so everybody just watches Z? Yes, that exactly. Comedic prequel? I am the Ray Bradbury version of uh, I am John Carter of Mars, and you are a more <laughs> successful sci-fi film. And that's the way it goes. All right, here's the first unit. There will be two uh, units being put on the big boy scale. Uh, both share a theme in which I feel like um, some people are excited about them, and then I just kind of don't feel anything at the moment. <laughs> so... Let's talk about him. First one is, of course, LR Full Power Frieza. His leader skill is for full power. It's key plus four, and then attack and defense 130%. Uh, oh, oh, and HP, my bad. I was about to say no HP, but no, there's HP. His super attack is the Death Saucer and the Nova Strike. That has to be the English words for those. That would, I'm pretty sure that not, that's not actually what they're Nova doing. Strike is that stupid thing he does where he puts the key force field around himself and he just kind of rams Goku. Yes, that is that is that. And is it really called Death Saucers? Is that what he calls his fucking so That's his destructive? destructive discs, yeah. Death Saucers, okay. Full name because the, he doesn't call them that, but that's what all the video games call it. All right, fair enough. Um, Death Saucers cause mega colossal damage to the enemy and then he loses 8% of his HP. And then his uh, Nova Strike greatly raises his attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage to the enemy. They both do. They both deal mega colossal damage, which is similar to um, Super LR Super Saiyan Gohan, Super Saiyan Two Gohan, which is great because you should see the D Free video where he says, "I don't think any other LR does this." And then all his comments are people saying, "What about LR Super Saiyan Gohan? What about LR Gohan? What about LR Gohan?" <laughs> I don't think you know this, but LR Gohan. Yeah, has... it's it's dangerous. Dude. Yeah, no, no, it's extremely dangerous to give a wrong opinion because people will definitely tell you. Not even a wrong opinion. He just didn't know, so people immediately told him. Is it... Incorrect. Yeah, it, not no in no way was he incorrect. He was just he didn't know. All right, and then his passive skill is Amplified Rage. Uh, this one is going to take a while. Key, t key plus two attack defense, 80%, and then an another key one and attack 10% when HP is 90% below her, and then another key plus two and attack 20% when HP is 70% or lower, and then another key plus two and attack 20% up when HP is 50% or lower, and then plus an additional key plus two and it's, uh, attack 20% when and he gets to perform a critical hit, guaranteed, when HP is 30% or below. And all those stack every time he goes below whatever threshold. So he just gets more Sounds power. Sounds okay. 
Yeah, I think it. I think it ended up being. So that's that, why I made this is begging really hard for attention. So there is some barking coming. No, it's okay. Mavis is. It's only uh, a matter of time. Mavis is always welcome onto the show. Good special guest Mavis has joined uh, to be released. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, the the great thing is people are only hearing you laggingly deal with your dog in the background. <laughs> Uh, Hello, darling. Please. It really does so. For fuck's sake. <laughs> I think this entire thing. Continue. Sick. All right. Uh, his link skills are, of course, prodigies, universe most malevolent, strongest clan in space, big bad bosses, over in a flash, fierce battle, legendary power. And his categories are Planet Namic Saga, Full Power, Transformation Boost, and Wicked Bloodline. Uh, and that's it. That is L.R. Frieza. His animations were made before I'm the good I'm wrong anim- on this guy. Am I, am I making that up? Wait, say it again? They're <laughs> low quality, correct? They are very... That- I don't want to say very low quality, but they're the quality before the new stuff came in. So it's kind of like... Before they got good. Yes. And it's weird because I would say in the olden days, I would have considered it good. But then the new blood came in and now it's bad. It's like the the LR... uh, The Super Saiyan 4s. Yes. It is... I would say he's better... He's better... (laughs) He's better than both of the LR Super Saiyan 4s, at least in my mind, because I remember thinking LR Super Saiyan 4 animations are all boring, and he also doesn't get a muffled-ass sounding Goku and Vegeta delivering their lines, so he's automatically better on that sta- on that uh, on that stand, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, he's just kind of... Does he have an active skill? No, and that's the other weird thing about him, is that Ooh, like, he is just one... Dude, he sucks. Hate him. Giru? What are you talking about? Hate him. Not Did... Giru. Oh, okay. Um, no, he's just really weird, because I feel like he was a unit that was made a year ago, and then he was released one year later. I mean, probably. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, no. If he was around back when um, we got those original LRs, the one where we thought it was going to be Namek themed, and then they fucking cucked us out out at the end, I think it would make. Oh, it made it fusions. Yes, I feel like he should have been released around that time, but he wasn't. So now he feels weird because his passive skill, while good, is weird because it's just like so basic. So there's nothing. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Like Black Chaos card description anymore? Yeah, no. It's long, I'll give it that. But there's nothing like... There's no way to play differently with this Frieza. You just take damage, and then you're good. And then that's it. And then also he is the category leader for full power, which I don't... Because he has the Frieza links, I don't see him working well on full power at all. And because of the Frieza links, he doesn't work on Namek Saga either. To be so, Frieza. Yeah, so he really because he's so Frieza, he really only kind of works for um one specific um kind of team, which is again keeping it with the wicked bloodlines, which is where he'll stay. So for all the Frieza fans out there, which is mainly Goresh, they'll be perfectly happy with this unit because he fits perfectly well into uh, Wicked Bloodline, and um, that's about it. I want to say that's kind of it, as far as as far as I can see. Maybe there'll be future tech later with new unit releases where it turns out that this LR is actually way better because he's at least extremely powerful, but he's also not as powerful as the uh, constant dark shadow that's looming over JP Dokon, which is LR Broly, who is coming up pretty soon. So that's Frieza. If you're hyped for Frieza, congratulations. You've been waiting this long for him, and now you can have him. But otherwise, I just can't. I don't. I feel like, especially after how good Super Saiyan Goku's was, this this Frieza doesn't cut it. For me, personally. 
I'm not a fan either. Yeah, no. So how do you feel about him on the big boy scale? Three. I'm going with three. I think three is fair. He is definitely a very strong boy, and if you can't underestimate his muscle mass, which makes him very big. But other than that, the card itself just isn't... It's just not there yet, as far as I'm concerned. All right, that's full power, Frieza. That's a three out of five. Respect. It's been a while since we've both just agreed on a number, and we haven't had to combine them. Yeah. So that's a rare... That's a rare Number get. of low, low quality. Yeah. All right, let's go on. So thankfully, last night, Heroes, uh, they released a whole bunch of stuff to Twitter. So there's a bunch of hero units coming out, and here's one of them. He is the main bad guy, and I feel the exact same way about this guy that I feel about Full Power Frieza, but less because I have no idea who this guy is. His name is uh, Sealus, uh, Seal Ass, Seal, Seal, Sealus, Seal. You, you cut Dugong. out just right there. So I'll just I'm just gonna call him Seal, for all intents and purposes. Said just call him Dugong. Okay, he's Dugon. So we're talking about Dugon. His super attack is called Dance Skybreaker. He causes immense damage and greatly lowers the defense. His passive skill is called Scheme to Create a New Era. Attack and defense 100% up when performing a super attack. Artificial life forms category ally allies. Key plus one attack 20%. Time traveler category allies. Keys plus one attack 20%. And um, he can assimilate when conditions are met, which is transforming, and the uh, transformation condition is five turns. And then he turns into Dugon-fused body. His super attack is called Boisterous Dance, rending Fused rooms. body. Yeah, fused body. Passive skill is final phase of the plan. Key plus three attack and defense 60%, attack and defense 120% when performing a super attack. And his link skills are unchanged, which are Brainiacs, Thirst for Conquest, Big Bad Bosses, Cold Judgment, Shocking Speed, and Fighter, Shattering the Limit, and his only two categories are Time Travelers and Transformation Boosts. Wait, what? That, that, that doesn't make any sense. You see the issue here, right? With him only having those two I categories. can't even see the issue. Because I'm only getting every ninth word of what you're saying. Okay. He boosts artificial life forms when he's not in artificial life forms. Ooh, that's not ideal. So I don't know. Oh, I don't... oh come here. Uh, these translations are also done by Goresh. And I think to be fair to Goresh, I'm not sure if these are. I think he's had to correct a couple of them just because when he literally just woke up when he made them. So if they're a little bit inaccurate then it's not the biggest deal in the world because he literally made it when it was like... But no, it really looks like he only has two. Ah. Ah. Get down! Uh. Okay. Sorry. I like that uh, the only thing on the recording is you dealing with your dog is coming in perfectly clear and no, no breaks <laughs> at all. Shut the fuck up! Shut up. Oh, quiet. Stay down. Uh so yeah, that's that's Dugon in a nutshell. I actually have no idea how I'm a fan he... of Dugon, to be sure. I just don't know about this guy. Is he like a Apparently big he's the best Ad of Dragon Ball Heroes? Is he? I mean, he looks like the bad I think, guy. I, I think so. To be fair, his final form... Oh, okay. So Gorish just posted some super Dragon Ball Heroes shit, like, that I've ever seen. And it's literally uh, Super Saiyan Rose hit. Um, and they said it, it's one of the bad guy's team absorbs them. So I, I think he's the bad guy. Okay, that would kind of explain why it looks like Super Saiyan Rose. Um, he, you see the pink hair for a bit uh, when you when he transforms and stuff. Um, well, regardless of that, I'm not talking about the quality. I don't know the character. I just think that this card... Um, I don't know. He just doesn't do anything for me. His super attack is also not yeah. of the Super Saiyan Goku era, so it's okay. 
but it's also not, I think, something that's amazing. It's one of those things where I think, like, it's a regular Dokkan super attack for a vast majority of it, and then it has a very pretty picture for a brief second. And then it's over. Oh, bleh. It's not as good as... Two a... out of five. Fuck this guy. Yeah, I'm on the same boat. It's a two out of five for me, too. I just don't... I suck. I don't feel it. He might be a good unit. Uh, I haven't seen any info on it yet, and we don't know yet, but based off of this, I just don't like him very much. Might be a good unit. i ranked on the big viability in a very long time. Yeah, it's true. Viability is something that's usually a foregone conclusion. Either you're good or you're not, and everybody knows it within getting mine, so who fucking cares? Okay, yes. Also, we have to do something that's never been done before. We have to do an addendum, because I realized that um, when me and my friends, the Mew Mew Force, were ranking Broly, I specifically said, I'm going to try and make Broly go as low as possible as to not pass LR Kid, uh, Goku, and Aureli. And he doesn't surpass Kid Goku, but they did pass the LR. So I'm going to need oh. to add about uh, – I'm just we're just going to say right now that LR Kid Goku and Aureli are about the same as Kid Goku because I not, cannot have Broly with his fucking 40 on the big boy scale <laughs> reach the be better than them. So if anything, they're 40. A 40? He got a 40 because, again, my fucking friends are – they saw the very pretty art and then Jace got told that Broly – uh, hates Goku because he got uh cr- when he was crying as a kid he hates Goku and he upped his score even higher. <laughs> you should check out that episode. It's very good, <laughs> but it's also infuriating for me. Who was like, oh man, if this was any other episode, he would not have reached this high, <laughs> but he did. Uh, I'm uh, they're not. We're giving Broly a 40. They're not a lot. We need to our substitute talent. But they're all I have when there's no D free or you. No one, <laughs> no one else lives on my time zone and is willing enough to be like, I'll drop whatever I'm doing to help you out, Wokey. <laughs> and we have to live with Broly getting terrible scores. Yeah, that's something that we're going to forever just have to deal with for the rest of our known existence. So yeah, I'll say at least um, LR Kid Goku and Aureli have one more than Broly. And we'll let uh, the master of keeping the list, the big boy list, uh, the big boy list for the big boy scale, <laughs> he can uh, add this in and I'm sure he'll perfectly fix it. He's already uh, helped so much with everything else. But with that, I think we can finally go into questions. Zen, let's get into these questions and uh, try and see if we can bring this home with uh, all the lag that's going on in the background. <laughs> well, hey, I'm going to do my best. Yeah. So again, if you have a question, leave a uh, comment on YouTube or send it to me on Twitter. There's no YouTube ones this time. So we'll just go straight to Twitter. Uh, first question comes in from Violet Bunny. And she asks, why is Ditto so terrifying in Detective Pikachu? And the reason is, is because there's no way to translate Ditto without making him terrifying in real life. Uh, Ditto doesn't uh, play well with, like, human... Man, you know where else... Oh, my... Mavis. Uh, you know where else Ditto's fucking terrifying? Have you read Pokemon Adventures? Uh, I don't think so. I think I've read one of the Pokemon mangas. That's not one of them. Uh, did it was fuck come on adventures because it can copy like living things but anything Whoa. like the girl picking house locks with it and like breaking in places oh it's awful that's creepy <laughs> again there's yeah, it's like turns into key stuff for it there's a reason why there's an uh, old uh, mythical creature called the changeling and that its entire ability is its ability is to perfectly uh, change into a baby and then it can replicate it. They can replace your baby and then you you have a changeling baby for the rest of your life and you never know because it's so perfect at copying. It's because anything that can perfectly copy something 
is terrifying to deal with in real life. That's what makes the Terminator so scary. Yeah, it's pretty freaky. I'm not a fan. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question, Violet Bunny. See, I could also ask Violet to come on. I'm pretty sure she would be down for it. If we live in the same. Yeah, there you country. go. She won't. Be- well, now she's going to watch this episode, and then she's going to realize that she can give Broly a 40 hour have to kick her off, too. Ah, oh, shit, you're right. I can't actually. <laughs> you're right. In good conscience, I cannot ask Violet to join in now. She totally would do something like that. <laughs> uh, it's next... a classic Violet move. Yeah, and then she says, fuck Penta as she leaves. That's also a classic Violet move. It is. Uh, watch, uh, watch the podcast to learn all your backstory on Violet Bunny. <laughs> Next question comes in from TFLT, which is Toaster of Fun, and he says, "What the actual hell is up with all the fast food places around you and them having crazy people?" Uh, California, that's it. I don't know. I, I, I think this general area, as I've said before, there's a Burger King. There is a McDonald's and there is a Taco Bell, and each one is not good to eat at in terms of I can never have an actual decent meal to myself. Uh, whether it be because Burger King, and I think the, the Burger, I should also mention that that Burger King is also the Burger King that has a giant ass flat screen TV that plays Fox News randomly. So it's just like not. Um, conducive to anything and then i've also said before that that taco bell had people doing cocaine out of it and that's why i left for a bit and did not return (laughs) until Uh, until quite a bit later uh mcdonald's had those kids that were playing dokkan in it so i automatically can't trust it and then i think they also got in a fight (laughs) that's fair those same kids eventually got in a fight with an asian man over a stolen basketball which is really weird to just deal with in the background as they were all like six of them were all not even six of them. There were like 20 of them and there were multiple groups of, of them aside. And then there was one Asian man who just was like, give me back my hat. And they're like, no. And this was all over a fucking basketball for some reason. I don't know. It's not, it's not safe out to eat. So there you go. Big area. It's a very interesting area. This is what happens when you live in the weird parts of California. And you have like halfway houses everywhere. People are just trying to live their life, you know. Uh, next question comes in. Th- Thank you for the question, Toaster, of course. Uh, next question comes in from Yowie Mom at AX Bitch. And her ad is actually just Yowie Mom. And she says, what do you think about this photo? And this also means that I'm going to have to put up this photo for this specific part. So let me look at the timestamp as I give this to Zen. Uh, one moment. Let me send you the picture. That is the picture. Yeah, I should probably see it. Yeah, that is the our bird Sonic, who was recently he's a guinea fowl, recently born, and my sister has been raising it in the house for a bit now. Uh, his name is Sonic because just like Sonic, he goes super fast inside his cage and goes back and forth over and over and over again. Uh, and he's currently finally living outside uh, because he needs to start getting used to the outside. Uh, and my sister's pretty broken up about it, so <laughs> I've been on Sonic Watch for the past three days, making oh, sure. Oh, good. Yeah, making sure no <laughs> raccoon tries to like steal it in its cage, or the big dog Cotton doesn't try and like break the cage open and <laughs> release him to the outside. <laughs> Uh, but in terms of this picture, I think this is a good picture of Sonic. Sonic is a very photogenic bird. He's also a very weird-looking bird because <laughs> he looks kind of like a dodo to me. Yeah, uh, he's got some 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 funky quality. That's personality, you know. Yeah, exactly. He's a very personality bird, and I approve. I approve of Sonic. He's also named after everyone's favorite hedgehog, of course. So. That's a that's that's a two thumbs up on the looking good at this animal photo scale that we've started on this show. It goes right next to the Hall of Fame, right next to um that picture of your dog in the uh in the the final Namek Saga f- uh, battle video, which the end of that video is just your dog. Oh, it's just 
On the couch? Yeah, just on the couch, laying up, showing, having a good time, <laughs> resting, relaxing. Uh, thank you for the question again. Next question comes in from uh, a person who has actually been forbidden from asking any questions, so we, I will not answer the question of, will you marry me? I'm sorry. You've been banned. The yeah. ban stays. <laughs> yeah, banned. If you're banned, you're out. Yeah, sorry. Not answering that question. But thank you for sending it in, regardless. <laughs> uh, next question comes from Gold uh, Sayajin, which I think is how you say Saiyan in the... I was going to say Spanish, but that's not correct. <laughs> in Japanese. Saya. It's, it's Saya, not Saya. Say, okay, Saya, 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 Saya. Uh, and his question is, can you and Zen play some games together? Uh, boy, howdy, let me tell you, I have the most <laughs> wealthiest content of me and Zen doing just that. We have uh, this series called <laughs> Captain Tsubasa. You should totally check it out. It's fantastic. Uh, part two is almost at 200 views somehow, even though we've stopped promoting it. It's, it's the version. Might be. I also want to say that is the best part of Captain Tsubasa as well. Because that's the one where we just do nonstop goals and shit on the enemy. <laughs> so it's really good. I'm behind that. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, um, I'm always down to play Zen. Hopefully one day um, when everything's normal again, we can escape just playing Game Boy games and gotcha games. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I also realize that I guess it's been a very long time since... It's been at least two weeks since the last time we actually did a video where it was just us playing a video game that was not a gacha game. That was the last time we put up Pokemon Crystal. Just because I've, I've been busy with work, so we haven't had time to... I've been doing a lot more solo stuff because it's easier for me to just do solo and then automatically upload it and not have to edit anything. Uh, yeah, I know that game. Yeah. So yeah, the answer is, of course, I will always play some games with Zen. And uh, I swear to God, someday Zen will upload the next part of our um, Pokemon uh, Soul <laughs> Soul Run. Oh my God, that exists! Yeah, you need to fucking uh, upload it because I've been waiting Jesus a very Jesus Christ! I keep forgetting that it's a thing. That's why I'm calling you out on this episode now, so you can finally remember. <laughs> I we've talked about this. Everybody, multiple... everybody, at me on Twitter every day. Hey, can you? Yes, always, every single day, remember to at Zenrot2. Please release it. And specifically, it's on my channel. It has to be on mine, because that's the one that gets it next. <laughs> uh, good time. Thank you for the question, uh, Gold Saiyajin. And the next question comes in from Taco Mav, who says, Do you get into anything? Uh, do you have anything you would like to get into more, like hobbies? Um,. Hobbies. Um, I think there's a part of me that always wants to play um, real life Magic the Gathering again, but also realizes that I actually can't afford that hobby, so I don't. So I stop myself. That's fair. Yeah. So if I had enough money to, enough uh, expendable income, I would definitely like to get into that. That's the one hobby I can think of. What about you, Zen? Um, I'm good with my my hobbies that I like. I'd like to stick to it instead of picking it up and drop dropping it. I'd rather stick with it and just start doing like end game stuff like consistently. Mm. I'm I'm pretty content. Yeah, for for the most part, I'm I'm the same way too. Again, it's only the the only reason I have the magic pains is because I've been playing a lot of Magic: The Gathering Arena, so that's why it's like popping into my head of like, oh, I should definitely uh, full go full back onto everything. But if it wasn't for that, I'd be perfectly fine with the hobbies I have. Um, thank you for the question. Next question comes from positive hashtag Watch Bakuman, who says, "Will you be the plot armor of my armor, Titan?" 
I don't know what that means, so I'll say, sure. I assume that's good. Next question comes in from Most Creative Name, who is at his, uh, I think just Creative 3 name or something. Uh, it does, uh, it's fine. Thank you for the question. And he says, ah, oh, yes, finally, I remembered to be here. Okay, so remember the guy hype for Int Goku Black? I feel like I'm the guy version 2 because of the four-year banners. My question, do you guys feel like the UI slash UX of Legends as an app is kind of sucky too? It's important. It's improved a lot, but I still don't have a feel good feel about it. Um, the UI of Legends is kind of weird from what... I don't think it's... It's, like, it's not easy to get to where you want to go. No, it's not at all. And then there's multiple menus. Like, I still think it's really dumb that in order to get to the the shop medals you have to go through the actual store which i don't understand yeah, why it's that's, really dumb it's really dumb it should be its own tab 100 um i don't know I, 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 it, in terms of legends the legends has a lot of problems with that one of them being they recently fucked up the, how the game plays but the ui could also use a little bit of work it used to be fine because the game played perfectly okay, and now it's this new thing has also made it worse. I don't know if this counts as a UI thing, but I also think they need to fucking start adding a click this button to automatically put all um, whatever put, uh, soul stuff into your things. Because I'm getting tired of manually clicking every single one and taking five minutes to actually get a unit to. Oh, yeah, that it was like. The potential to fix that shit sucked. Yeah. And now it's currently at the place where the potential system was at its worst, which was the reason I didn't use the potential system. But in Dokkan, I could have at least ignored it for most units. For this one, I can't. There's just no way around it. I have to use you it. You have to do it for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, they could definitely improve some of that now that they've stopped fucking shitting out banners, except for the fact that I think um culturally insensitive androids are coming soon in the next summon banner which is uh <laughs> so I oh guess... yeah the face and like the weird native american one yeah so i can't wait to hear what they sound like in english see how that went by <laughs> what but... weird units to release yeah it's only because who the hell they... is clamoring for android 14 and 15 nobody but also they've just accidentally buffed android 17 to be amazing so they they're now deciding to release a bunch of um android units to go with him it's totally one of those uh, things like okay. we have uh, they have two solid ass units in uh as sparking units i'll say with android 17 and cell so now it's time to release more that aren't just the ex androids <laughs> that are good companions with them so I'll see. That's the only reason why they're being released. And even then, I would have released Android 8 before any of them, because I think that would have been a better unit to have. Yeah, probably. I would have taken that fucking, uh, the red-headed Android that Goku fights and kills pretty easy before them. So, I don't know. We'll deal with that. Thank you for the question. The uh, Again, I think uh, we answered it with, yeah, we think it sucks. It could definitely be better. Uh, next question comes in from Nathan, who says, who asks, do Pitter Patter really be popping? And the answer is yes. yes. Just check out my multi, which I did right after recording Pitter Patter Pop to see that it really be popping. Yeah, poppin'. what I tell you. Yeah, it was pretty and funny. It, it, uh... And then I started playing with that new guy, and you are totally right. He just kind of sucks, even when you combine him with the guy he's supposed to be with. Yeah, yeah, Seko's bad. He's very bad, and I tried using him a whole bunch. Uh, next question comes in from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, um, who asks, <laughs> What happened to Zen's Discord server? Also, by the way, if Black was a unit in this game, I would have married him already to increase his stats. Also, I think he's talking about um, your current Discord server, which is, I believe, now called Otago's Cult. Um, oh, the has... one that I'm not in, in anymore. Yeah, you're not in it anymore. Nanogenics is still in it. <laughs> oh man, 
JX is still in it. Here's something really funny. Lola Gami is in it. And <laughs> Coley is in it. Zayadat's in it. Um, a guy called Dude That's Funny Bro Thanks for Posting is in it. And I'm still in it as the ultimate uh, fledging uh, Hunter Wokey. Are you guys in the old one and not the new one? Um, is there a new that one? That I'm actually in. Actually in, yes. Oh, because you never sent me an invite to the new one. Okay, so that's the reason why, because this oh, is a Okay, old I'll invite one. you to the new one after we're done. Okay, good. And then I can have my new status. I've been wondering, because usually I would get a couple, like, um, mentions from your, your server, and then I would show up and be like, hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Um, I don't know why you called me, but you seem to like me, so I'm here, and I'll, I'll say hello. <laughs> Thank you for calling me. Uh, but that that would explain why that I don't get those messages anymore because you're not on the server anymore. Uh, I didn't even, even in there. Yeah, I didn't even fucking realize. Um, do you want to say what happened? I assume you just decided to make a new one. At every certain point, a Discord server just gets too out of hand, and you need to restart. Basically, it yeah, it, it was way too out of hand. Like shit, post central, and I was like, all right, we gotta. Again, mm, bold move. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's what happened to Zen's Discord. As for you, marrying black, go for it, dude. I approve. That's a thumbs up for me. At me on Twitter and on the Discord. There you go. Do that too, Johan. If you want to join the new Zen Discord. Uh, next question comes in from Neo, who is not the neo that we think of which is the one who constantly fights with anime people it's some uh, his ad is lr uh ricardin nine so it's not that neo and he asks have you ever watched the spectacular spider-man cartoon i don't think i have i have it's very good i saw that old spider-man cartoon the one where uh mary jane got turned into a puddle and he fought the X-Men for a bit. The one in the, the, one in the 90s? Yes, that one. <laughs> you know the one. The one where uh, yeah. the Venom was yeah. in the opening for a full year before he showed up. Yeah. Spectacular Spider-Man is a lot better than that one. <laughs> All right, I'll believe you. Oh, and then Positive... Uh, okay, thank you for the question. And then this question comes in from Positive, and this is his real question. He says, serious question time, uh, your favorite Final Fantasy girl and why? Again, I heard favorite Final Fantasy. Girl. Girl. Favorite Final Fantasy game or... Girl! Tifa's boobs. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm getting like six letters, but I think you said girl. Yes. Did you say girl? Girl. It is girl. Okay. Yes. Okay, I got you. Uh, uh, that's tough. Between Yuna and Aerith, because I will be non-committal like that. All right, that's fair. Um, again, Final Fantasy IV is the only one I fully played through, so it's going to have to be uh, Adult Form Rydia, if I believe that is how you pronounce her name, which I'm going to say it's not. I've always uh, said Rydia, but it's a text-based game, so I really have no idea. Yeah, her. Because she could summon, like, fucking monsters and shit, and I was like, that's awesome. Yuna can also do that is not a little girl or an adult. But the thing is, is that when I was a kid, that's when I played that game. So it was a little girl, and then all of a sudden <laughs> she turned into an adult. And I was like, holy shit! They can, the girls can do that? And then it was really awesome. So that's why I like her. That's what I remember. And again, this is also coming from the guy who's really only played Final Fantasy IV. So I'm limited to my scope. I don't want to start naming girls that I don't know where the, where their game's from, but I see a lot of art of them. I feel like that's not fair to the girl, and I shouldn't just be uh, automatically saying she's my favorite because I just like the way she looks. That seems unfair to her character. It's very respectable. Exactly. 
in in a in this current day and age where no one can respect fucking diva anymore i'm saying i'm gonna stand up and i'm gonna say i'm respecting her and saying ma'am i will wait until i play your game to have a full fledging on your character before i dedicate myself i feel you deserve that kind of respect and that's the way it will go uh thank you for the question thank you for the serious question um Next question comes from Truth Seeker Huey, who asked, "Have you ever considered making a big girl scale?" Uh, we debated it for a brief second with Legends when Ribrianne was added, but that's the closest we've ever gone. Uh, yeah, it's hard to do that because there's just not enough girl Dragon Ball characters. No, they don't, really, especially Dokkan. Like dokkan where though the only april fool's unit never playable was the fucking female one the one you actually want to play as um yeah, the cybermen uh, uh, totally playable and i don't want to shit on the cybermen because i thought it was really funny that they recreated that scene so uh, this is i'm not angry at the cybermen i'm angry at the devs <laughs> um so that's why it wouldn't work for uh dokkan or really Jojo, because Jojo almost kind of suffers from the same problem. Yeah, uh, Jojo has... And, uh, other than part six, which is like all girls, Yeah, Jojo has like two or three parts with, with a relevant girl character in it. Yeah, so... Just not possible. Uh, so we'll just say that the big boy scale is perfectly accepting of um, female uh, females in it. Just like how the girl oh, shows... Scouts... Yeah, just like I think for a brief second, I can't remember if the Girl Scouts accepted boys, but it's okay for a girl for a boy to be a Girl Scout. There's nothing wrong with it. Just like there's nothing wrong with a girl being a big boy. That's our stance, and that's what we're sticking with. Exactly. Uh, next question comes. Preach from... inclusion. Exactly, preaching inclusion. Uh, next question comes in from Nighthawk, who says. Inspired by your Burger King video, what is the worst fast food experience you've ever had? Uh, so, I'll say this. I'll just say this one now because this is not going to be enough for this. Is never it would never have made it to Wookie Story Time, so I'm fine with just saying it. Uh, one time when I went to Pollo Loco, uh, I used to go to po so. Oh, shit, maybe I should save it now. Now that I think about it. <laughs> I was about to give a full backstory of my of my relationship with Pollo Loco, so maybe I'll just save on to that. Uh, but I'll say one of the worst fast food experiences hap happened at a Pollo Loco. And the basic idea was that, um, let's just say it was around the time that Trump was elected, and it happened in a Pollo Loco. Ooh. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll save that for another Wokey story time. <laughs> what about you, Zen? <laughs> Years are turning on that one. Um, it's probably um, we, me, and three of my of us walked from my house a Burger King, which was probably like a three or four mile walk. Oh, it was fine; it wasn't difficult or anything. But and and then we thought it would be hilarious if we ordered just like food so that the people at the counter were like what the fuck i have to make this heard a platter of 20 cheeseburgers and we ended up five of them and then walking from my house and that was misery oh yeah i was about to say fuck that i forgot you forgot about the part where you have to walk back burger king is the only food yeah. that i feel shame after eating because i don't want to move anymore <laughs> yeah it, uh, it, it's like your body down. 100%. And it just doesn't... I don't understand why, because I've eaten uh, a lot of McDonald's and gone, okay, I think I can walk back, though. I've eaten a lot of Taco Bell, and I've occasionally felt like, oh, that was too much. But I was able to walk back. Burger King knocks me the fuck out. Like, I, when I've eaten too much Burger King, I'm like, I regret everything I've made up until this moment. I should never have come here. <laughs> yeah. Burger King is a mistake. One, yep, one hundred percent. It was a mistake. Uh, hope you enjoyed that one, and look forward to another uh, Wookie story time when it comes in. I swear to God, not all of them are going to be about fast food. It just so happens that a lot of people like fast food stories. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next question comes in from Jordan, who is at is at George or two nine two, who says, I think I remember you mentioning about you watching. We never learn. If you are, who's your favorite character? And I do in fact watch, um, I, I read it more than I watch it just because, um, I like reading. We never learn as opposed to watching it. It is a, uh, weekly Shonen Jump, uh, manga that is not Yuna. It is still a harem. It's just not Yuna. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe it. And let me see. I think I, it's so it's weird to me because I think like a lot of people in their mindset when they do harems, they have to start being like, this one is clearly the best. Now let me tear down the rest of them. Where I don't really feel have that in me. Where I just go like, I like all these. I just like one of them more than the rest. And the one I like is um, Ogata. That is the that is the smaller of the two girls on the cover, and the one with the uh, larger chest. If that helps, there you go. That's one of my favorite. That in terms of girls, I assume when you asked that question, you were asking about the girls. It's it's her. I like her a lot. And there you go. You're mad about Tifa, is what you're saying. No, I love Tifa too. No, I'm not one of don't try and fucking <laughs> put one of those people on me. I want you to know that I love all form of girl boobs and don't pretend that B cups are actually very uh small when no that a B cup is actually around the size of like a D or something or whatever the fuck they were thinking of. That picture that was like clearly not B like mm boob sizes are so they made no. a fucking deal out of it they fucking treat the b like spanish people treat it when they when uh they come over to this country where they think it's a v or something they don't think the b actually is a letter that they could say they don't understand <laughs> it um god i love the fact that we're making a lot of side references to the fact that you've been fighting one man one very stupid man over this tifa situation <laughs> very dumb person the dumbest people follow Zen's Twitter. If you want to see the full story of it, it's an entire thing. I woke up to that. So <laughs> I woke yeah, up. No, to... it's a God. Did you see him say that? Uh, I shouldn't be wearing leggings because her, her thigh highs would restrict her ability to fight. Oh God. I love when people are saying, He's saying what is basically socks can't make her fight. Saying that it makes no sense to put her in a sports bra because the socks would prevent her from fighting. So that the, the logic that she's wearing a sports bra to fight better is flawed. Man, what the fuck is happening with the... <laughs> no, what the fuck is the world anymore? Do you think – I think it's a very a specific subset of people who are just like – they've created the idea of uh, rational female proportions is actually the end game. And this is where uh, this is where it begins. If, when nobody talked about Tifa's boobs, uh, there was no one to stop them. So they took away <laughs> Tifa's boobs. And then when they came for me, there was no there one. There people that actually think that, though. That's the problem. Is they're like, this is like the demic. And we're going to lose all of our anime titties soon. God, they're not going away. And also, you're treating it as if... The crazy thing is is that you're also treating it as if fan artists have ever actually cared about the bust size of a character. I don't think they've ever given a shit about that, ever. Never. The character's bust side is whatever the fuck they decided to be for that specific drawing. And if you want proof of that, just follow at uh, uh, Triple Coma, Aminal. And you just don't, turn on his don't tweets, him. and you'll see all the different body proportions out there. Uh, some of them you would never imagine on a model lady, but there you go. <laughs> don't do that to yourselves. Don't have have a better life than that. Don't do that to yourselves. Or do it. Just follow the darkness. <laughs> follow the darkness. <laughs> Thank you for the question, Jordan. I really like We Never Learn. You should check it out. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> and the final question comes in from Rain, whose uh, fellow name is Rain uh, at RainDBZ, who asks, 
what's your opinion on Or's death and Or 2? And I thought for a second he meant Oreos. And I was like, oh, man, don't tell me they took away Oreos, too. I <laughs> or collection, then Oreos. Like, why was he take everything I love from me? Um, I think Or's death has uh, fundamentally changed me and Zenra in ways that we never believed. Where I think... Yeah, uh, I'm, uh, I'm still, like, hesitant to trust <laughs> other games now. Because, yeah. like, what if you spend a lot of time on it and then it gets shut down? Exactly. And that's what I feel like. I feel like that's why I've kind of turned into a gotcha Ronin where I play a lot of gotchas, but I never fully dedicate myself to any one of them at any given time for too long because they could all disappear at any time. Just like or collection. Just like betray I you like or did. Like or did. It will be like it would be like there wasn't enough money uh, spent on us. And I was like, I brought the vendors. Isn't that enough? And they're like, it <laughs> what more do you want from me? Why did it have to cost a hundred for ha- a multi and a half for a collection? Why did it God, cost? Their really were so bad. It was the worst. So I don't want any complaints about saying that vendors killed or collections. If anything, vendors made or collection playable for about six months yeah, before it died. The only reason that anybody played that game at all. Yes. Because that shit was a hundred dollars for like. Thing. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is that I think when that happens, it's a really a good sign, and it sucks that all these companies are Japanese, and we can never actually convey to them that if you actually just price your shit like correctly, people will buy. <laughs> if you just make it affordable, people will do it. Yeah. But like, if you make it terrible, no one's gonna do it, and I don't know what they're expecting. Yeah, and I want to say it's because like specifically the Japanese fan base uh is able to pay that much i don't know how i think we've i think you've tried to look into like how the fuck does anyone in japan play gachi games and go so crazy because it doesn't make sense there's dokkan dudes that like don't have any kind of following or anything like tubers that make the money back yeah but these dudes spend like banner it's insane yeah and i i just want to know like what is it is it simply because i think i remember talking to a friend of mine who was heavy into uh fake grand order he isn't as much anymore but it's mainly because he's angry at the game for fucking him over finally they he they broke the the the, the final straw of the camel's back but back when he used to do it he i always was like how are you able to just like spend this much he's like well i do what the japanese do i have exactly enough money for rent i know exactly how much money i have for food and then I don't really care about anything else. So <laughs> I just spend the money. It's not like the money's going to go anywhere that I actually care about. In the current living situation that I'm in, everything's fine. Like, everything's paid for. He has no problem. So he's just like, I, I can just spend it. And I was like, oh, I guess. Fair enough. I guess. I you know, it, it, it is your money at the end of the day. And that's how you choose to spend it. And he's like, look at it this way. I literally, if I didn't spend on this, I don't spend on anything else. So... If I'm already not doing anything with my money, then I may as well do something. Like, I already have everything else perfectly squared away. And obviously not everyone is the exact same way. Because we've definitely heard a bunch of cases of people who have, like, lost their... Lost basically everything. Or, like, the... remember that guy in the sub back in the day who was like, Uh, uh Dokkan has officially made me broke and I had to sell my car and house. Yeah, I do remember that. There are definitely people who get affected that way. So it's kind of like there there's some people who can figure out how to spend. And then for every person like that, there's even more people who spend too much, who don't have that kind of control and have that kind of management. And I feel like at this point, I'm just saying now, like I, my basic feeling about what or died is that I wish or was more expensive from when it was here. I don't regret spending any money on it, but I also can't help but feel like if it was actually more affordable from the start, it would never have died. And that's my Wouldn't main... have died to begin with. Yeah. yeah. And that's my main problem with Or Collection 2 coming in is that besides the fact that we literally don't know anything, check out poor um let me quickly find it, because I remember seeing his tweet a little while ago. Um uh one moment. Let me quickly find him. Cause I want to give the proper credit to it. It's going to be, ah, uh, damn it. I know I got to find it. I now finally have enough followers on here that it's actually kind of annoying. Original content, OCHD, there you go. 
OCHD has been doing the sad, the sad, sad thing of like OCHD is the reason why we were able to play Or Collection. And for Or Two, he was the face of Or Collection basically. Yeah. So if you got, uh, if you have any following about what Or Two Collection Two is coming up, I would say go follow OCHD. It's out. His ad is out at OCHD YouTube. But literally in the latest V Jump, this is all that was confirmed. Hey, look. Takabo and I don't know how to pronounce that Japanese name, but Yuki has finally been confirmed for or two. No other info other than these two characters are coming. That's it. And then also it's, it's still coming not even out. out yet, but these two characters are coming. And it's still coming out twenty nineteen. And also this is the last V jump before the Or Collection two second anniversary. So that means that a dead game has been basically dead for over a year. And close to over a year. It's about to hit a year. Just sitting there doing nothing. Sitting there doing nothing. Where the 100 people that still play it are still playing it because they want to get their stuff into Or 2. But that's about it. But it's crazy to me that it's like, yeah, literally no no info. That's all the info you got. Yuki is going to be in it. Like, no shit. (laughs) Of course Yuki's going to be in it. So I'm still kind of... The funny thing is, is that we've gone to the cycle of like War Collection 2 was announced and I was hesitant because I was like, it's not going to share the same things as War Collection. So I don't know if I can trust the art of it or not. And now it's been so long where now I'm just going like, what the fuck is that game? Did did they literally like start from the ground up and that's why nothing has been done so far? Because really just now it's been so long that I just don't care anymore. Yeah. And I don't blame people for not caring anymore. Like, uh, to be honest, if um, Or Collection 2 comes up, I'll definitely check it out. But I just can't trust it the way I used to. Because I know for a fact... like, Yeah, that makes to, sense. I need to see stability. It feels I, like they learned the wrong lesson. Yes. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does almost. So I'm like... Especially because I feel like or, the Or 2 on it is... The 2 is only there to placiate the fact that the people who played Or Collection... This game is dying. We're going to make a new one. Join us. It's technically Or 2, but it also has a completely different name. Than that. And it doesn't look anything like yeah. Or 1. Exactly. For no reason. So, yeah, we'll see. If Or Collection 2 is able to reach one of its reward pillars without us having to rely on D Free and the Western fans to get it there, then we'll know. Because if we show up for it, if the West shows up, that's not enough. They need the Japanese people really, behind it. The West was there before. Yeah. It didn't matter. They didn't give a shit. So. Yeah. We'll always have that shining moment where the Japanese person asked. Oh, a lot of Westerners out here. It was foreigners. A lot of, a lot foreigners. of foreigners out here. A lot of foreigners out here. That is our legacy. That is the legacy we made for our collection. We made an entire player base confused as to why we were there. <laughs> yeah. Worth it. Worth every penny. Yes. 100%. And with that, that was the final question. And that brings us in to the 2B release for this week. So, let's do our outro. I think the outro is extremely long, so we'll just keep it to the very simple... Uh, because the I show's like gonna be fucking impossible with all this lag, by the way. Oh, it is 100%. So let's get, let's do our best. Because I'm gonna remind you. Remember, kids, uh, don't play Dokkan. Because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's no good. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. We got it. <laughs> <laughs>